So here is a guide on how to raise the level of happiness of a settlement to 100. Once you do this, you will unlock the Benevolent Leader Trophy. At the moment, I'm at Red Rocket Truck Stop, and you can see I currently have zero settlers and 36% happiness. So I've done this once before, and it took me two, three hours, and I did it here at the Red Rocket. You can see over the back here are some mutt fruit trees I've left behind. And you can probably notice that all the junk has been removed, and that's the first step you want to take. Just scrap all of that chunk. So hopefully by now you've chosen a settlement. I suggest choosing something small and avoiding sanctuary hills. Next I want to talk about perks and there's a couple you're going to need. Underneath Charisma you will find the local leader perk and you will want to put two levels into that. That allows you to build stores and workstations that affect happiness. Once you have the local leader perk at level 2, there's another two perks that you might want. And these ones are optional. You can either get the Cap Collector, level 2, or underneath Intelligence, the Medic, level 1. I'll explain all these later and how they come into play. Next, what you'll need are Settlers. If you don't already have a few generic ones hanging around from other settlements, you can go under Power and Miscellaneous, and you can build yourself a recruitment radio beacon. That will attract people to your settlement. Since I've already got a bunch of settlers in Sanctuary, I'm going to fast travel over there and send them over to Red Rocket now. So here we are over at Sanctuary Hills where I currently have 20 people living. And what I want to do is open up the workshop, find a settler and press square so that I can move them from Sanctuary Hills to Red Rocket Truck Stop. And I'm going to aim for six settlers, preferably no companions or anyone that has an actual name. So if you're like me and you already have an established settlement like I have here at Sanctuary Hills and you're not going to use this to earn your trophy, then find a seventh settler and what you want to do is open a supply line by pressing R1 and send them to your new settlement, which is in this case Red Rocket. Once you do that, this settler will now become a provisioner. And what that means is this person will connect this workshop here at Sanctuary Hills to your new workshop at Red Rocket. And all the junk here is now available at Red Rocket to build all your new equipment. So yeah, if you have a provisioner, make sure they're based at your first settlement so that they don't contribute towards the population of your second one. What you want to do next is build some some food, so under resources, select food, and you want to plant some, preferably you want to plant some mud fruit plants because they produce one food and everything else produces 0.5. So go ahead and build, or plant, I should say, six of those, one for each person. After you got your food sorted, go under water and build a couple of water pumps. Each of these water pumps produce three water and you only need one per person, so a total of six. Power doesn't affect happiness, so ignore that. And go over to defense and build yourself a couple of machine gun turrets. So each of these produces five defense, and you want to aim for a total of 60, so 10 defense per person. So once that's all built, next is bedding, so you want to build one bed per person. So again, another six. So that's basically everything you need. If you want, you can go to resources miscellaneous and build yourself a bell and build that somewhere central in your settlement. And when you ring that bell, it just pretty much gathers all your settlers around. Which can be helpful if you're assigning jobs. I really should study my lines. So next what I'm going to do, and this is completely optional, you don't have to do this. Is just I'm going to trade with each settler individually and take everything that they have that I want and under my apparel I've got a whole set of extra clothes 
So all of these clothes pretty much have a boost in charisma. I'm not sure if that's important. But I just handed over this dress. Go over, press triangle to equip. And now she's wearing this banging dress, which is pretty nice. And I'm pretty certain it affects happiness, but I'm not too sure about that. So yeah, this part's optional. Could be taking these squirrel bits for sure. So next what you want to do is build some stores. So open up your workshop, go over to stores. And this is where the perks I spoke about before come in. So what I want to do is build, say a trader store. And right at the end is the trading emporium. You can see the perks required are cap collector level two and local leader level two. And you can see the description that says produces income based on the total population, makes settlements happier. So that's pretty much what you want, make settlements happier. So I build a clothing store, building a restaurant here, a surgery center, another clothing emporium and a clinic. So this clinic requires a medic level one and local leader two. So just pay attention to the perks that are required to, to build these stores. You don't have to build five different stores. If you only have a clinic available, then that's fine. You can build five clinics, but because I had the perks, I built different stores yes. anyway. Um, next, to open up the workshop, find a settler, press X, and then go towards the area you want the settler to work at. So in this case, I want them to work at the at the mud fruit plants, and you can see the food going up. Food level six. That person is now going to be a farmer. This person assigned to a store. This person assigned to a store. To all the stores are assigned. So you got one farmer and five retail workers. You can see that just by doing these things already my happiness is at 64 and still going up. Uh, what, what I'm doing now is I'm putting up a whole bunch of paintings. Some people believe it affects the happiness of a settlement. I'm not too sure, but I can easily afford it and it makes the place look nicer anyway. So everything is built now and this next part is a bit of a grind. What you do is you find yourself a bed and sleep for 24 straight hours. Once you wake up, immediately sleep again for another 24 hours, so two days straight. Once you've woken up from your two days of sleep, open up your workshop and just hang around your settlement. Keep an eye on that happiness level and once it goes up, sleep again for another 48 hours and keep repeating this process of sleeping and waiting until your happiness goes all the way up. This is a slow process so what I'll do now is I'll edit this video and I'll post how long it takes for my happiness to go up. But just be aware that in between each happiness increase I did go to sleep for 48 hours. You may get attacked overnight by super mutants or raiders, so quickly kill them off to protect your settlers. If you lose any settlers, just reload and auto save from the last time you slept. You can see that currently my happiness level is stuck at 99 with no up arrow. So what I did was I built a sixth store which is a clinic and I assigned the farmer to the clinic. My food production is now at zero but because my settlement has been established for a while it will still hold with no negative effects. Five minutes later there was still no progress so what I did was I shuffled my settlers around to work at the different stores and I got my rads cured at the clinic. A couple seconds later my happiness ticked over to 100. So that's basically all you need to do to earn the Benevolent Leader Trophy or Achievement. Uh, some people are under the impression that the size bar at the top right hand corner has to be in yellow to prove that it is a large settlement, but I found that to be untrue. Hopefully this video is helpful and if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe. Thanks.